It's a new frontier full of beauty and potential, and to find it, you'll have to look 5,000 miles south of Texas. Here, the excitement isn't about a precious metal or oil. It's about soybeans, corn, and cotton. Brazil has come a long way in recent years in efforts to feed its growing population. Now they are among the world's top exporters, but transporting commodities to ports still poses an expensive problem to farmers. A small group of Texas farmers and ranchers recently made the trip south to see firsthand how Brazilian agriculture is progressing. When we were here 10 years ago, the infrastructure lacked a lot. At that time, recognized that if they ever got their infrastructure together, that they would be a force in the world. There's an economic boom in Brazil, and the agricultural sector is leading the charge. With 190 million inhabitants, Brazil has the largest population in Latin America and ranks fifth in the world. That population is growing rapidly and is hungry, opening the door for Brazilian farmers to fill a need and increase profits at home. The Texas group made a stop at the port of Paranaguay in the southern part of the country where commodities from across Brazil are transported via trucks to ports like this one. Here, trucks may wait for days in congested lines before unloading their cargo. Despite transportation speed bumps, Brazil still averages $94.6 billion in annual agricultural exports each year. Like Texas, the landscape, people, and variety of crops grown is diverse. Unlike Texas, however, the agricultural production areas of Brazil receive an average of 80 to 90 inches of rain each year. This allows most farmers to easily grow two crops per field per year. Oh man, I'd love to have just a fourth of that some days, but uh, yeah, it's amazing. You know, they've got uh, They've got corn they're harvesting and they're planting at the same time. It's unbelievable. Uh, let's see how they raise so much corn and beans here. Mid-March found Texas farmers talking with Brazilian farmers, industry leaders, and researchers. About one-third the size of Texas in Patanai State, soybeans and sugarcane dominate most fields as the first crop. The second crop, usually corn or edible beans, springs up late in the season. The sugar ethanol industry in Patanai makes up 4% of the state's GDP. The majority of farmers work hand-in-hand -hand with their local cooperative to receive inputs like seed, fertilizer, pesticides, and also sell their crops back after harvest. Co-ops act as corporations that market crops to buyers within the country and abroad. Many of the co-ops have begun manufacturing their own products to sell within Brazil. A shopping basket at a local supermarket likely will be filled with products bearing the name of nearby co-ops. Well, the cooperatives seem to do so much research and pass that on to their members, even though you know there is a, a fee for that. Even though it's still a developing or kind of a third world country in places, in other places, it's on the cutting edge. Following U.S. food trends, interest in organic food production is growing in more affluent areas. In Curitiba, Paraná State's capital, there's a large farmer's market where local farmers sell their goods to the city's foodie residents. In the state of Mato Grosso, production is high, with agriculture counting for 60% of that state's GDP, but soils are very poor. Heavy fertilizer and pesticide applications are made each year to reduce pests and weeds. Virtually every crop is planted and harvested without deep tillage. It's amazing at the uh, uh, amount of water that they have and the way they handle their water. They don't have erosion because, uh, you know, no-till. Large farm groups like Bom Futuro are managed as any other business and work with cooperatives but do not depend on them like smaller growers. The group managed by the Maggi family operates just over one-half million acres and employs more than 3,500 employees. Cotton farmers in Mato Grosso see shorter growing seasons than Texas farmers, and in recent years, through increased technology, they've been able to produce higher quality fiber. Yet Brazilian farmers are not completely independent from seed to sale. Because transportation costs are so high through government assistance, they are able to receive a $10 to $12 reduction per ton on shipments to ports. Their way of subsidizing, they're, they're doing it through tax breaks and, and helping with transportation, some other angles like that. Despite increasing public relations campaign efforts, Brazilian farmers are growing increasingly concerned about the global perception of the rainforest. That's kind of like somebody farming in Florida and, and yet they're supposed to preserve a rainforest that's in Washington state. When you hear about it on the world stage, you would think, you know, they're just right outside their door knocking down rainforest and I think very little of that's happening. For as many differences as there are between Brazil and Texas, there are almost as many similarities. In both locations, family, pride, and work ethic rule successful agricultural operations. Farmers are kind of the same everywhere. They have some of the same problems. The frontier is rapidly changing, and with improvements to roads, canals, river systems, and interstates, the possibilities in Brazil are endless.
They want to be number one in what they do, and they're working to get there. For TFB News, Nathan Smith, Mato Grosso, Brazil.